the confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. May we all greet one another. The gospel heals all things. With that, the title for today is The Church That Overflows with Springs of Living Water. Today is the Sunday to give glory to God through the Thanksgiving service for the 36th anniversary of the founding of Yewon Church. Let us first give thanks and praise to the Holy Triune God who opened the doors of the 36 years of founding and 237 missions. Thank you, God. You have started all things, you precede all things, and you conclude all things. Thirty-six years have passed since I started pioneering in Mokdong holding on to God's voice of missions as of covenant but it feels just like yesterday. It's not mysticism, but I have heard the voice of God telling me to do missions. I didn't even know M of missions. And now 36 years have passed. It really feels just like yesterday. Maybe that's why I'm not aging. So, the pioneering members had come from America recently, and they bought me a tie and said, Pastor. And that person was a person who was getting their daily wage from their daily work. But they went to America, and they succeeded and they came back and bought me a tie and had said pastor how are you the same since we pioneered the church and i said is it lip service and they said oh no this is because of the grace that worked to be amazing and great and it was the journey of the covenant where we experienced new answers every day Above all, what is this? It is the covenant journey. It is living the life of the journey that fulfills the word. It is also because you and church believers have supported and made the covenantal devotion by having oneness in the ministry journey. As a senior pastor of the church, I've never seen a church with such unity and oneness. For the Korean churches, it's at a halt. But for Muslims, it's soaring. There are about 50 nations, but it's continuing to grow. So many hard countries that are in poverty, they go into Muslims. And for Buddhism, it's going down. But for Christianity, it's at a halt. The lights are being turned off. Look at Palestine. If they die, it's martyrdom. Like so, they are growing. Upon this time schedule, our church had oneness, and more than a month we prepared and given the greatest glory to God for the Continental Praise Competition. And it was such a time of happiness and joy. There is no beautiful and pure church like our church. It's a masterpiece of God. And I said, it's that everybody is first place because God does not listen to the voice, but he listens to the heart. You are so blessed and happy. 
Upon the 36th year anniversary, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to all the Yewon believers. I give thanks to God and thanks to all of you as well. Last year, we celebrated the first year for church consecration, giving glory to God through the church consecration. It's a true miracle itself. Upon the times of disaster of the COVID-19 pandemic, not being able to pay the pastors for many ch churches, they're closing their doors. Upon such situation, how can we do church consecration? Our Yeowon community was astonishingly used by God for the work that He accomplishes. Those who are small and weak, making the big to be embarrassed. We saw the works of God. In 2023, we have designated the first year of two three missions undertaking the covenantal challenge and i do scheduled prayer upon all the families not leaving one family behind may they be used for the gospelization of the two three seven nations and five dozen people groups may you believe that it will absolutely take place so upon the first year of 237 missions, we are undertaking the challenge. And God continues to pour out evidence of His plan to make all the nations be possessed. After establishing the first partisan of missions through the Colombian camp at the beginning of the year, God has been leading our footsteps to countries like Pakistan, Malaysia, Asia, and other nations where the gospel is rejected and persecuted and where many of the 5,000 people groups dwell. So many people are going to Munshik Chang missionary. And Pastor Dongchar Lee is going to Pakistan as well. And we're doing this ministry together. And there are people who believe in Muslims in, who are Muslims, but there are Christians as well. There are those neighborhoods where there are Christians. And the missionaries are opening those fields. And upon the countries that the gospel is rejected and persecuted, upon the fields of the 5,000 people groups, I am filled with anticipation to see how God will open the doors and guide us. I believe that He will use our church. The church is an institution established by God Himself alongside family. May you be filled with this anticipation in your faith as well anticipating how God will guide you and guide the church. God has established the church. The owner, master of the church is Christ himself. It's the church and family. It's what God had established through strong families and churches where the parts in the of the gospel is firmly built, God will establish the evangelization of the 237 nations and 5,000 people groups. Theologically speaking, this is referred to the fulfillment of God's salvation work. Unfortunately, at present, the church is failing to meet these expectations set by God. The church is failing to fulfill its role properly. The Korean churches are fighting with each other and having conflict. The state of the modern church is often referred to as the lethargic normal state, despite the reality of the churches that have become spiritually numb, as if being lethargic is the norm. It's that they just gather amongst themselves saying, this is where it is good. 
and reside there. Instead of giving influence to the world, these churches have found themselves under attack and saying, let's be comfortable amongst ourselves and not look for a change. It's burdensome. It's difficult. Let's not do that when God's ultimate command was to preach the gospel. So they act as, as if being lethargic is the norm. This is the state of today's church. Therefore, we need to embark the challenge of faith to transform into a spiritually normal state, healing the world as the light. We have been given that mission, but it's that the churches are being attacked. So we have to challenge our faith to be the spiritually normal state. We must have this heart of challenge upon our walk of faith. If you don't, you'll be bounded by Satan at that moment. Pastor Juan Carlos Ortiz said the church is not the church is a warship, not a cruise ship. Many churches are as if they are being on a cruise ship, saying that they like it there, being joyful, being happy amongst ourselves, having fellowship amongst themselves, but are missing the essential mission of the church. The church churches are taking loss of their mission, just enjoying themselves physically. The church, yes, should be a field of festivals. However, if you say that it is good here and reside there and say, let's stop, you're being deceived. That is the way to fail. That's why churches are closing its doors. If you enjoyed the festival, you need to restore the field. Restoring the field. Do you have a spiritual field? A place where you spiritually have battles and give influence. May that be the church. May that be our household. May that be our workplace and business. Within the field of the world, may you be able to fight the spiritual battle. With that power of oneness, we must build the absolute baptism of the true gospel, that Jesus is the Christ. Why do we have to become one? What is the purpose of that? It's being one and proclaiming that Jesus is the Christ to answer to all problems in the field and restoring the field. There are no answers. People in the world, they don't have the answer. Starting from the pastors, all the potential politicians, scholars, people of success, famous people, they don't have answers of life. They are just living diligently. They don't have answers. Because they can't find the answers, they commit suicide. They resent. And upon the last times, they say, oh, you have cancer. You're in your last stage. That's how they live. Being 90, a hundred years old, you die amongst that time. 70, 80 is where we're supposed to die, but we're living for a long time right now. But even if you live for that long, as if you're not going to die, it's that you have to prepare for death every day. Every night, I fall asleep saying, Lord, I cast my spirit onto you, preparing for the sermon, not being sick, and I can die. So you have to prepare every day. Are you afraid of death? If you're dead, you go to heaven, so you don't have to grind your teeth not being sad. Yes, it is sad, but it should not go for a month, for a week. It's not biblical. You're going to have depression. Yes, if that person went to hell, you have to cry 
all life long, especially when your parents go to hell because you did not preach the gospel. In fact, the original word for the gospel originally meant news of victory in war. It's Evangelion. News of victory in war. You were in war, but you have, vic you have had victory. It's saying that. The mission of the church is to achieve true victory in the spiritual battle with the power of Jesus Christ to bring the kingdom of God by preaching Jesus Christ. Young Gillian, that is the heavenly mandate of the church. Why does the church have so many stewards, like the deacons, elders, deaconesses, and senior deaconesses? It's that they have to be able to spiritually conquer that field and proclaim that Jesus is the Christ. If you think otherwise, then it is religion. It will be a hardship. It will be difficult for you, for the believers, for those with the heavenly mandate. It's being thankful if you have it or not. It doesn't matter. Why? Because Jesus is my Christ. You must live like Apostle Paul, writing the sequel of the book of Acts boldly without hesitation. Is that right? Your life, by your consciousness and guilt, you have to ask, are you writing the book of the sequel of Acts, or are you falling into Genesis chapter 3? You know, that is the title of today's sermon, the church that overflows with the springs of living water. Myself that overflows with springs of living water. When you listen to the word, you have to implement it to yourself. Oh, this is being said to me. It's not to my wife or to the husband. Celebrating the 36th anniversary of Yeoman Church, I bless in the name of the Lord that there will be evidence that Yeoman Church community will stand firmly as a 237 missions platform for this age. Number one, the unity of only Christ. Today's passage, chapter 47 of the book of Ezekiel, is about God showing prophet Ezekiel a vision by the living water that gives true hope to the Israelites who were in despair during the Babylon captivity, verses 1 to 2. In the vision, Prophet Ezekiel saw water issuing out from under the threshold of the temple, and the water gradually increased, eventually forming a large river. This river not only filled the area around the temple, but also around the surrounding deserts, turning them into fertile oil and eventually bringing about the work of reviving the Dead Sea. This water was the living water that revived all things that were dead. In particular, it is important where this living water flows from in the passage. We can see that the living water flowed from the threshold of the temple. There is an important spiritual truth contained here. Who does this temple symbolize? It symbolizes Jesus Christ. The living water flows from Jesus Christ. It flows from the Word. It flows from the water of the living water, which is God. Jesus himself says this in John 7, 37-38. 
위해서 생수의 강이 흘러나리라. Jesus is the Christ, the spring of living water. When you listen to the word, you don't become anxious, you don't have disbelief, you have peace, and you are restored with joy. Due to the incident of Genesis chapter 3, all men, without exception, left God, became slaves to sin, Satan, and curses. Suffer amongst the twelve spiritual problems, and has no choice but to go down to the path of eternal destruction. However, Jesus Christ, the offspring of the woman, not the offspring of sinful man, opened the way for us to completely escape the bondage of this curse. Upon restoration, that was the cross atonement and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The precious blood shedding the cross has become the eternal living water for us. Without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. According to God's way, Jesus completely paid for all the burden of sins on the cross and resurrected as proof of that. He is still alive and working in the perfect answer to all man's problems. He had bared the cross and completely solved all curses and resurrected. This Jesus Christ is with you right now. He's alive. Then isn't it all over? Call on to the Lord. Amen. Don't look at other people, asking for other people to solve your problems. But for His will and His kingdom. This Jesus Christ is with you right now, then everything is over. You believing in Jesus Christ? If you say that I believe in Christ, then it is all finished for that person. Problems are not problems. It's like a paper tiger. It's the introductory things of the world. With that, you're unable to sleep. Then that is such a foolish person to understand. That is being deceived by the snares of the of the Satan. Are you still having conflicts of the introductory things? All the things that you pray for, it's all of the introductory things. You don't have to worry about that. Are you thirsty because of the materialistic things? May you just be thankful of living in South Korea. Do you want to go to North Korea? Do you want to see how they live? In the world, it's the only country that they are starving. That's why they want to escape, because they don't have Jesus Christ. It exists here and they don't have it there. It's that difference. We're all the same people. It's the same circumstance, environment. But what is different? It's the same IQ. It's that one different thing. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the answer to all problems. And for them, they cannot solve those problems. Verses 3 to 5. Prophet Ezekiel followed the guidance of God's angel and entered to water flowing into living water. 
a, a thousand cubits in the passage means about 500 meters. It's very long. The first time you went in, the water was ankle deep. The second time it was knee deep. The third time it was waist deep. And then the fourth time it was deep enough to swim in, yet a river that could not be passed through. This shows that our faith must continue to grow in the grace of the Holy Spirit. All members of Yeon Church, all the faith is different. There are people with faith who are of the ankle. It's that they're unable to have family gospelization. They only believe amongst themselves. Then it's the knee height, waist height. You must examine yourself. What standard is my faith in? Not being able to walk, are you swimming in the river of grace? Our faith has to spiritually continue to grow. It must grow. What is the evidence of that? It's that your church duty changes. Your field changes. Those who are in the forefront of 237 missions must reach the level of spiritual faith to swim in the final fourth step. It doesn't matter about your faith. The moment that you believe in Jesus Christ is the end of it. This level refers to being filled with the Holy Spirit and taking the walk of faith of complete enjoyment. For our Yohan Church, the new believers always say, how can all the people who go to Yohan Church, their faces are so lit up and are at peace. That's their first reaction. Amen? For Yohan Church believers, their DNAs are different. The circumstances, standards don't matter because they enjoy by the gospel alone. Amen? John 10.10 10. Who is Jesus? Upon the festival, there was a lack of wine. And then Jesus provided it without it being lacking of what was of a better quality. Amen. It's not just ending with salvation, but being abundant. And then you'll be able to do 237 missions. The life of Jesus Christ, it's so that we would be able to abundantly swim in. In Ephesians 3.20, Apostle Paul reveals that God is able to do four more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power of the work within us. It's not saying, oh, because I'm embarrassed, because I'm so sorry to God. Don't say that. What parent would ask for those children to be like that? It's their loss. For the parents, if they are asked, they have to do it for their children. God is almighty, the creator. Don't walk around eggshells. Say, give me more grace. Amen. If you look at Ephesians 3.20, abundantly, then your thoughts. God bless me more. May I be used for world evangelization. But 
But there are people who cannot go deeply within, and only their ankles are in the in the water. Yes, that may give you some coolness, but isn't it better for your knees, your waist, to go in, or if you would be able to swim in the scorching heat? Tertullian, a person of the early church, said, One more thing that you should know after knowing the truth is that there is no other truth besides that truth. These are important words. What does it mean? Besides the way of Jesus Christ, there is no other way of salvation. You must, must be able to know this. It's saying to not be confused. Besides Jesus Christ, there is no salvation. Besides Jesus Christ, there is no one who can solve my problems. No one can give me satisfaction. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to salvation besides me. There is no other way to receive salvation. Uniqueness. It's the absoluteness. That's why you must be able to have this mission. I believe in, in the name of the Lord, the Mayonio believers, raised the baptism of Christ in the 237 missions field, no matter what circumstance it may be. Number two, the platform for restoring and healing, verses 8 to 9. <laughs> Upon the life, the water of living water, it flowed from the threshold of the temple, and life revived, and amazing works of the restoration and healing took place. As this water of life flows into dead seas, like the Dead Sea, the sea water became revived. This is the word of God. May you believe in it. Anyone who believes in Jesus Christ, they will be healed. If they receive grace, they will be healed. May it be according to your faith. The source of water of life is what we live from. Pushing and believing in faith, it's what God knows. Being able to touch God may be according to your faith. It was healed at that moment. If you receive grace, you'll be healed. There will be healing and restoration. There will be life. Those who believe in Jesus Christ, here, live, will be revived. The moment that you believe in Jesus Christ, you'll be able to have life, hope, and vitality. That's why we guide all the shamans who are bounded by Satan. Yes, for non-believers as well. There are those testimonies of saying, I was going to commit suicide. And there was a person who had a very serious facial expression. And 
and that person found the answer and now comes to church. In such a situation, being able to give this living water is being filled with vitality, life, and hope. If you look in the passage, it says Rapa, which is that it will be revived. The word has the meaning of to repair something that is torn, to return to something that is wrong to normal. This word is usually used as the meaning of cure or to recover in the Bible. Jehovah Rapa, Jehovah God is the God who heals. All problems in life are completely healed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I bless you in the name of the Lord that the spiritual problems, mental pain, and physical illnesses that you have at this time will be completely healed by the blood of Jesus Christ. In front of the blood of Jesus Christ, it is healed. May you believe it because God is the God of healing. May you believe in this. And I bless you. Verse 12. The characteristic of water of life is that it's abundant vitality that causes it to bear fruit. It is normal to have fruit. Due to the water of life, it is normal for a fruit tree to grow and its leaves to not wither. What is especially important is that this history occurred when the water of life flowed. You'll be able to stand as a fruitful witness of the field of life when you enjoy and testify of the life of Jesus abundantly. Above all, the fact that the water of life flows from the temple bears abundant fruit that sees everyone is connected to the mission of the church. The church has a mission to ensure that the water of life of Jesus Christ flows to the regions, nations, and to three seven nations and 5,000 people groups around the world. We go to save them to the camps the church should be a platform of restoration and healing. We must listen to the voice that cries out, come and help us. So we are now taking on the new challenge of missions and working through the 237 missions funding. One account is 237 won, 1,000 won. It is a symbolic meaning for the evangelization of the two threes of nations. It is important for everyone to participate in the two through seven missions that God is establishing. If you make a resolution and dedicate yourself with a happy heart, it will be an opportunity to experience God's blessings that are pressed and shaken into your arms. In the church in Paris, France, they were doing offering for commissioning out a missionary. The offering plate stopped in front of one person. He was a blind and a poor man who could not even donate even one franc. But he slowly counted and donated 27 francs. People around him were surprised to see this and asked how he was able to make this offering. He smiled and answered, I am blind. But when I asked my friend how much it is to turn on the lights in the evening, he said that it costs 27 francs. Since I don't need to turn on the lights, I thought I could save this money 
throughout the year, so I saved it. Although I cannot see the Lord, who is the true light, has made me give this offering. Dear fellow believers, one heart is important. Your dedication for missions will become a platform for healing and recovery that shines true light to the spiritually blind people. I bless you in the name of the Lord that all you believers will be able to enjoy the true answer of missions of the siege. This is the conclusion. Prophets who receive prophecies from the God in the Old Testament prophet books have unique names. Isaiah is called an evangelical prophet. This is because the prophecies regarding Messiah's redemption and salvation by God's grace are clearly recorded in the book of Isaiah. Speaking of Jeremiah, he was a weeping prophet. This is because he was a prophet who predicted the destruction of Jerusalem and urged repentance throughout his life, but prayed with tears in this heart as he saw no change at all. Ezekiel, whom we looked into today, is called the prophet of hope. Ezekiel was called to be a prophet during the Babylon captivity, and God gave him hope for recovery through the three visions. The first is the vision of dry bones becoming a large army in Ezekiel chapter 37. It shows the work of coming into life when preaching the word of God. The second vision is a reconstruction, reconstruction of New Jerusalem and the new temple in Ezekiel chapter 40. In the last vision of the overflowing living water in today's passage, as the own church celebrates the 36th anniversary, it must become the church where the living water overflows and the gospel unity, evangelism unity, and missions unity that instills true hope in various regions. 37 the 237 nations and 5,000 people groups around the world. For all believers who are in the hands of the Lord, I bless in the name of the Lord that may all believers of Yon Church will be in the hands of God carrying out the mission of the sage, standing proudly as the ones who will possess all the nations. Their Father God, thank you for letting us be able to come to the church with the overflowing water. May you be able to realize why we listen to this word and be able to be the sending and going missionaries. And may they be able to realize that the gospel heals to three, three seven nations, healing me and all people around me. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen.